Lesson six is going to be combining the last two lessons and talking about how they interact in the phase change diagram. So we're going to be reviewing the different types of heat of reaction formulas, when to use them on the phase change diagram, and identifying where they are. So again, the different references and formulas that we need to know come from table T and from table B in the reference table. Table T is going to hold all the different mathematical formulas that we're going to be using, and table B holds all the specific values for water. So when we look at our endothermic phase change, we're again noticing that we start at a very cold temperature and we work our way up to a very hot temperature. This is because endothermic means that you're gaining energy, and as you gain energy, you're going from a solid to a liquid to a gas phase. As you go up these different phases, you encounter two phase changes, which we call melting and vaporizing. As we've learned in the earlier videos, each of these has its own unique formula. So therefore, when our solid is gaining heat, we're going to be using the formula Q is equal to MC delta T. The delta T specifically represents that change in temperature. When we get to the melting phase, we're going to be using our Q is equal to MHF formula, which is stating that the mass of our sample undergoing the phase change is being multiplied by its heat of fusion value. When we now have a liquid sample, we're going to be again be changing the temperature, and that refers to the Q is equal to MC delta T formula. When we get to the last phase change, we're going to be using the Q is equal to MHV formula. And finally, we get to the gas phase, where again, the gas sample can increase in temperature up to whatever point the scientist or chemist or problem puts it to. And the same thing happens only in reverse for the exothermic phase change. Again, this is an exothermic phase change diagram because we're going from a very hot temperature and working our way to a very cold temperature. Because of the fact that we're going from a gas to a solid, we're losing energy. And losing energy, or energy leaving a system, is what we call an exothermic reaction. So as our gas is being cooled, we're going to be using the Q is equal to MC negative delta T. Why is it negative delta T? It's going to be a negative delta T because when your final temperature and your starting temperature are subtracted from each other, it's going to always give you a negative value. So as you chill a gas, you're going to be using that formula. But when you undergo the first phase change, when the gas condenses, you're now going to be using the Q is equal to M negative HV. This means that the heat of vaporization is going to be negative to symbolize the exothermic change. As the liquid now starts to cool, we're going to be using, again, the Q is equal to MC negative delta T. Again, your final temperature and your starting temperature are going to be two different values, and when they are subtracted from each other, they're going to always give you a negative answer. When you get to the last phase change, which is the freezing point, or the solidification point, you're going to again be using the Q is equal to M negative HF formula. When you do this, the amount of heat lost will then make you a solid. And then once you return to the solid phase, you can again chill the sample until whatever point needed or demanded in a problem. So finally, if you were to add up all the different Q values from the phase change diagram, you can determine the total amount of heat absorbed or released in the physical reactions.